what's up, Vlad? What's up, man? Welcome to my garage. We call this garage Cars to Envy, all right? Now, this is just some of my cars. I know some of them are not here right now because car show season is over. And one thing about these cars is you have to maintain them. You have to either drive them, you have to service them because you got to keep them looking pretty. All right, so let's talk about the first car here. Yes. So this is 50 cents car. This is 50s, yep. Yep. Okay, so number one, why is it here? Uh, well, 50 has, I mean, probably about 10, 15 cars. He's always on tour. He's always moving. He doesn't drive them. So I, do, I use a lot of his cars for the car show. Mm. So every time I pick his cars up, there's always a problem. The battery's dead. Uh, there's no oil change. Uh, the tires are flat. He does not drive them. So when I get his cars, I like to keep them. I like to maintain them. And I use them for the car show. And 50 allows it. Okay. And what exactly is this? This is a 2010 Rolls Royce Phantom drop head. So Rolls Royce made this in the four door and people loved it. Uh, they wanted to make a, a convertible and they made this convertible. Back then, this was about probably $585,000. Very hard to get. Uh, not too many people purchased it because it was so expensive for a convertible. Uh, people with a lot of money absolutely positively did. 50 was one of them. He had it for this long and this is one of his favorite cars. This car has changed color so many times. At one time, it was gray. The original color is white. He wrapped it gray, then he wrapped it that red, and now it's back to white. So we took all the wraps off, we cleaned it, we buffed it down, we put some shoes on it. And this is known as the boat on wheels because it's so big and it drives and rides so smooth. This is this is one of the, the cars that you drive when you just want to floss. And you can fit the whole family in there. You could actually fit five people in this car. So my kids love it. When I take when I pick my kids up from school all the time, they love this car. This is one of those cars. Okay, and it's got the suicide doors. Yes, it's got the suicide doors. You know, it has a little umbrella here, ashtray there. Uh, as you see, this is 50's car, not mine, because I really know much, not know too much about it. But yeah, this is one of those cars. This was the, the big thing that people would get the umbrellas out and they would drive. And I think Khaled had one in his video where he was like this. So yeah, this is the big thing about this. And the reason they do this is so if it does rain, you ain't got to worry about getting your car wet. All you do is just put it right back in here. All the water goes right in there. So that's how simple that was back in the day. So. That was the dope thing about this. Suicide Doors was something that was new that most people didn't see. The only time that they seen it was on the 67 Lincoln Continental or 68 or 69 Lincoln Continental back in the days. So this was kind of the rebirth of that and people just seem to love it. And Rolls Royce has been winning it with the Dawn, with the uh, Cullinan and with the Drophead, which they don't make anymore. They make a smaller version with that they call the Dawn. So that's what it is. Now they don't even have the Dawn anymore. They have a car called the Spectra. So Rolls Royce is not is staying away from gas and going to electric. Mm. So the Spectra is going to be 485,000. We have the first one coming in the States, which will be here before the end of the year. Uh, and then a, a year from now, they'll make that convertible. We don't know the name of that yet, but these will all discontinue. Okay, it's all wood on the inside, of course. This is an actual convertible. It's, not, actual, like, it's not like a permanent No, no, this is actual convertible okay. and this is real wood here. Uh -huh. So this is real wood. This is one of the things that costs a lot of money on this car. This whole car is handmade. So Rolls Royce really loves the fact that these cars are handmade. Uh, they cost a lot of money to make because it's not a machine made type of car. So every vehicle is different, whether it's the seat, whether it's the stitching or whether whatever it is, Rolls Royce is very serious about that. These are one of the cars that's going to go down in history. Uh, I've been trying to get 50 to actually sell this, but he loves this car so much. This car is not going anywhere. But how much is this car worth like we sell right now? Right now, this car in this shape is probably worth about $380,000. It has a lot of miles on it because 50 actually drives the car. Uh, this is probably the only car that he drives so much. I mean, that, that meme that you see him pulling off on, that's right. this car right that here. That was this car. That so was this so car right on Entourage, he pulls up the turtle. Yes, in this car right he here. Talks about his daddy's car. <laughs> that he right. laughs and, run, and drives off. And you constantly see that meme all over social media. And this is the car. Oh, see you out here in your daddy's car. Okay. You're right. Don't be somber. Okay. This should look good. Right. <laughs> Even when you see uh, there's a, a, a party that, that 50's talking about, shout to Fendi, it's his birthday party, 50's in the car. This is the car. This is the car he loves the most. 50 loves this car. This is his favorite car. I think this is his favorite car, absolutely. Okay. He will not give it to this. And of course, we have the 24 inch rims on here. Yep. So we put 24 inch rims on it. So I'll tell you the true story of what happened, right? Don't tell 50. Let me show you. I'm going to pull a tie here. So what happened was we had these rims on it. And sometimes when we go to a car show, you go to other people's city. And when you go to other people's city, sometimes they really don't know what they're doing. 
So in this case, we thought the guy knew what he was doing. So when he went to clean the rims, he put acid on the rims. When he put acid on the rims, the acid didn't come off and ruined the rims. So we have to actually repolish the rims. So while we were waiting to repolish the rims, I just said, you know what, let's make this car dope. And we put 24s on it. So now 50 has a pair of 24s and we have to repolish the rims. So if you look at this, they were shiny. They're not shiny anymore. Um, this is probably the first time 50's hearing this. So you know how 50 always say, I want my money by Monday? Don't worry, Fifth, we'll get you your money by Monday. But that's what happened with the rims and that's why we put the 24s on it. All right, now this is a car I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. This is very unique. So tell me what this is. This is a 2021 Ford GT. Now Ford made 1,350 of these vehicles and to get this car, you had to actually uh, do a video of why you should have one. Uh, this car came out, uh, the original car came out back when it was this whole movie Ferrari, uh, Ferrari, Ford vs Ferrari uh -huh. and the Ford GT was part of it. So they redesigned this car for the newer generation and to get this car, you had to tell them why. Some people had the original one, that was the reason why. Some people uh, said, hey, I'll take it to cars and coffee. Some people said, I'm, I'm gonna put it on a track. So many different reasons. Allegedly, there was maybe 20,000 applications that they said, uh, and they only accepted 1350. The first one I ever seen was Michael Strahan. Ah. Michael Strahan had one of the, the first original ones, and I just remember seeing his and just loving the car. He could barely even fit in the car because the seats don't move. Mm. So once you get in, the seats don't move. Now the steering wheel will go back and the pedals could go back, but the seat stands exactly how it is. It's not the sexiest car to get into, but once you're in it, this is this is a mean car. This does zero to 60 in three seconds, 660 horsepower. And what most people don't know is that this is a V6. Oh. So it's not a V8, it's not a V12. This is a V6 under the engine and this car, car moves. When Ford did this car, there was many collections. So, and this was the most limited edition, which is the studio collection. Studio collection comes with the graphics and these are not stickers. These are actually paint. So if you feel it, it's not a sticker. It's actually paint the way they did this. So this whole car is painted like this and all these designs are actually painted. They only made 20. And when you get this from Ford, you don't get an option of what car you want. You can't say, I want the heritage collection. They tell you what you want. Mm. So uh, this was probably one of the most expensive additions. This one was about six hundred and ninety five thousand dollars. And Ford, any car that they make, they want you to put down at least half. So you have to put down at least half deposit to purchase the car. And all these cars were built out in Canada. So the cool things about this is, of course, one, the doors open up. This is what the kids love. The kids love when these doors go up. Uh, we had to do a couple of modifications on this car. One was we had to actually put a, a vent in the front because when you drive it, the rocks all go through here and you hear the rocks when you're driving bing, 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 and it just annoys the shit out of you. So Ford makes you sign a contract that you have to keep this car for two years. If you sell it less than two years, you'll get fined. They'll sue you and they'll take the car back. We've seen that with a wrestler. Oh, well, John Cena. I John actually Cena. Looked, up the, looked up the article, you know, since you mentioned it, John Cena bought one of these and then flipped it right away right. and then got sued by Ford. Correct. And he had to settle. Yeah. And then Ford took the car back. Oh, and they took the car back they on took top the car of it. Back, yes. Okay. Yeah. So Ford is very like they're very put like this. They hold the title for two years. Uh. So you, even if oh, you pay, they this have car, the actual title, so yes. you can't even legally sell it. No. So he didn't actually even sell it. Well, I think with I mean, his he tried case, to sell it, but it didn't I actually. I think with sell. his case, that was beforehand, and I think it's one of those things that says, okay, well, we have to protect ourselves a little oh. better. So right now, Ford actually has a lien on the title for two years, and then after the two years is up, they take the lien off. But I think in that case, that was before they did that. Uh huh. And that was the reason, probably one of the reasons why. But this is probably one of my favorite cars. Very rare. You never see it anywhere. Okay, so you've gotten $1.3 billion offers for this Correct. car. But you haven't taken it. I haven't taken it, no. Do you think you'll actually take an offer for this at one point? I don't know. I'm a car collector. This is one of the cars. I like having cars that nobody has. And this is one of those vehicles. This is, you're not going to see this at a, a, a rally. You're not going to see this at a car show. So I really love this car. But... You know, it's like anything else is you have these assets for one day for you to sell and, and your kids to be great. Or maybe my kids, my daughter, my son might love this. But for right now, this car just stays in the collection. And every time I bring it to a car show, people love this car. I mean, people say the cars are bad investments because as soon as you drive it off the lot, the price goes down. But these types of cars, we're talking about really small, limited edition joints. They actually go up in value over yeah, time. Yeah. Well, just a, just a, I had a 918 Porsche. 918 Porsche, I paid 1.1 for it. Uh, and I sold it pandemic for 1.7. You know the right cars to buy, they will go up in value. It's kind of like knowing the right art to buy. You, yeah. you can buy somebody's art and it's worth nothing. But yeah. if you buy the right piece, you know, they go up in value. And, and that's how I am with cars. I know the right piece to buy, what right piece to keep. And 
when to let it go. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, interior. All right, so you look at the interior. First of all, when I talk about this car, this is all carbon. The car is fully carbon. This is all real carbon. This is not a sticker. This is not some of the stuff that you see in some of these other cars. That is real carbon fiber. So the dope thing about this car is, like I said, getting in this car is not sexy. Like, it's not one of those things where, no, it's not sexy at all. You kind of got to sit like this. You got to have your, your, your Megan Thee Stallion squats, knees great. <laughs> you got to get in this way, and then you got to kind of turn this way to get in. Now, that's how you get in the car. So now with this car... Since it wants to be so light, there's not a lot of mechanical things in it. So to actually pull this, you have to pull this and that pulls the gas. I don't know if you've seen the gas and the brake. That's how you pull the gas and brake. And if you want it back, you kind of just got to pull it back the other way. So that's how you get the, the, the pedal, the brake and the gas to go back and forward is you pull this little tag right here. So it's not anything else. And that's how you do it. So the seat is very standard. So to pull it. That's how you get the seat out. And this car really has nothing in it. It's just a radio and that's it. Not much luxury. This car is for fast. It's for speed. It's to put on a track. It's to when somebody pulls up on you, you blow the shit out of them. That's what this car is exactly for. And that's what this car does. Um, really not much to the car. Left, right. The modes are pretty simple. Let me show you some cool stuff. So, so like this car goes in V mode. And... Um, show you see how it gets low to the ground so if you look for the car the car is so low to the ground that when I say you ride the street it's so aerodynamic so it goes so fast because the wind is actually blowing over the car the car is as low as the point now if you look to the ground now the dope thing about this is when you pops right back up yeah so this car we designed like I said Rudis and Tudor so we designed it with white we wanted it to pop a little bit just to keep the color uh this red was a $35,000 option so we added red wait 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 the red paint was a $35,000 option. Yeah, so Ford only offered six colors. Uh, it was white, blue, yellow, black, but red was a color that I wanted and it was a $35,000 option. So to get red on this car was a $35,000 option. To put these uh, white color seats in the car, that was a $20,000 option. Um, yeah. So everything on this car is you have to actually do. And they send you little cute things of the car when you're building it out. And they send you pieces of the leather and things like that, which is pretty cool. And if I ever do sell that car, I have all that for the next buyer that he can have. But it's, it's just stories. Me and my son designed this and that was it was pretty cool. Uh, and like I said, if it wasn't for my assistant Mercedes, we would have never got this car. So we're pretty grateful. And this is one of the cars that we love. And I know at any given point, I got 1.3, 1.4. <music> Okay, so we're going in a very different direction with this yeah. car right here. Now, when I was going to high school, if you had this car right here, you were the man. Absolutely. It wasn't about, no one knew about Rolls Royces or Bentleys or Ferraris. This car right here, if you had this, you were the man in my neighbor. Yeah. What is this right here? This is a, a 1988 E30 M3. Mm. Uh, this was a car, as you said, when I was in high school, middle school, all the drug dealers had. Exactly. Um, and they were the cars that I always wanted. You know, I would see them on Jamaica Avenue in front of the Coliseum, the 3 Series, the 6 Series, the 7 Series, the 8 Series. And the 3 Series was the car of choice. Um, I could have never afford it. When I started DJing and making money, I said I wanted to buy one. I, I was looking for it because the market in these shot up. At one time, you could grab one for 10, 15 grand, and then it shot up to 60, 70 grand. Wait, 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 wait. You're telling me an older car like this was 60 or 70,000? This car right now is probably worth about 80, 90, 100 grand. No. That could probably sell us for about 100 grand. That's wild. Mm -hmm. Because Frank Ocean had this car on one of his album covers, yep. right? Yep, yep, yep. That was it Nostalgia, I think? Was yeah, it? yeah, Nostalgia, yep. Yeah, so it kind of shows the significance of this particular car. Not just a BMW, not an M something, but a BMW M3. Has, it's like a magical kind of combination. Yeah, so with, with this car, um, I was looking for one, and I was trying to find one at a good price. And somebody called me, hit me on Instagram, and said they had one in Boston. Uh, and they were going to put it on uh, eBay the next morning if I didn't come buy it right away. Oh. I remember I was in the middle of my DJ set. I was in Queens. I think it might have been Starlet's. I'm DJing, and the guy calls me and says, yo, I need you to come get it now. Now, Boston from New York is about a four-hour drive. <laughs> and I was like one in the morning, two in the morning. I stopped my DJ set. I get in my car, and I drive to Boston to go get it. Okay. Four hours to go get it. I'm tired. Me and my man, we drive down there to go get it. When we get there, we didn't realize how we are going to get it back. <laughs> so now we have to go to U-Haul, buy a, uh, you know, rent a trailer. I've never trailed anything in my life. 
So now we get to the car, we buy the car. The car was beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up, beat up. And then we brought the car back. I didn't even know how to strap the car down the right way. When I got back home, the straps were hanging off. It was pretty bad, but we got the car back safely. And then when I got it back, I didn't know anybody that can fix it. So what I did was I put it on Instagram and said, hey, anybody out there that can fix these cars, call me. Uh, and I got a, a, a million calls. And then one guy out of uh, Queens, out of Long Island, called me up and said he can fix it. His name was Vin. And um, I just liked him. He didn't have a huge shop. He just did it on the side. He was a, a Wall Street guy that just liked fixing cars. We linked, we connected. Uh, and his uh, Elite is the name of his company. And he fixed his car from Muda to Tudor. We went every way to do this car, how we were going to fix it, what we were going to change, what we were going to do. And we just put the car back to original. We didn't touch the interior because the interior was great. This car has about 75,000 miles on it. Original miles, never touched. Uh, everybody was putting BBSs on there. Mm -hmm. uh, he advised AC schnitzers because it's tires and rims that nobody really uses, but they were still big in that era. So we put the AC schnitzers on there and we did the car up and people loved the car. But so the car, the original car is uh, Diamond Schwartz, which is like a dark gray, but it's called considered black. A friend of mine that I went to college owns his own rap company. It's called Envy Rap. So if you need raps, holler at him. And we decided to make it pop. So we got this green and we wrapped it green and this car's a hit. And everybody loves this. Every car show that we go to, it's, it's a beautiful car. And we did this whole car over. So even if you look at the, the inside, like we did everything over on this car, all original. So I'll open it up so you can absolutely see it. From the fuse panel to the engine to the motor, this is all original. We didn't touch anything. This is original engine. We didn't take anything out. A lot of people swap these engines, put new engines in it. We didn't do anything over on this car. We just brought it back to life. And this car is probably one of my favorite cars. I think the only thing we did was put a wrap and tint the glass, and that is it. Okay, so how much did you buy the car for? I'm in this car for about, I think I paid maybe 20000 the most, fifteen okay. to 20000 it was all car. beat up. It was all beat up. Got it. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, I thought that this was actually a body kit. No. Because back in my day, you know, you had the AMG kits, the fake AMG kits, and everything else like that. So when I saw the flaring, I thought that this was, you know, something you did yourself. But this is actually, you know... E30 the, M3. Yeah. Okay, this is the way the M3 came, the ground effects, yep. and everything else like that. Everything That's was there. Yep. the way it came. Okay, now what about the tail in the back? Anybody that owns this knows that this tail will give people a lot of problems. I guess the way it was made and designed, this would always crack and always have problems. So people would always have to paint it. There would always be a problem. So we kind of wrapped it in a carbon fiber to make it look dope. But uh, this is always cracks. We always have a problem with this. But the car is just, it's just amazing. It's a beautiful car. I'll tell you a funny story. Um, they made this in convertible. The E30 M3 convertible. Not too many made it to the States. A guy out in Long Island had it. Uh, he was selling it at the time for like 120000 I think it was. Damn. Um, and I was trying to get him down, right? Trying to negotiate. Um, and somebody else bought it. And I was so mad, so mad, so mad. Fast forward, I run into Coach K from Migos. Okay. Coach K bought the car. Actually, oh, Coach K bought yes, the car. Yes, Coach K has that car. And I could have had that car. And it's beautiful. It's uh, diamond shorts, black with the dope top, convertible, and they don't make it. They're very hard to get. And if you do find it, they're worth 170, $180,000. So nobody wants to let them go. So for right now, I got my E30 M3. All right, here we go. So this is another one of 50's cars. Correct. Okay, what is this right here? This is 50 Cent's Lamborghini Aventador S. Uh, this is the one that he calls Big Crip. So you, pro I'm probably sure that you've seen Snoop Dogg driving this. I'm sure you've seen 50 driving it and a couple other celebrities when he does his huge uh, tycoon weekends. And this is another one of those cars that 50 has that he never drives. And this is one of the ones that I probably changed the battery on this car three times. Hmm. And the reason that you change the battery is, is usually when 50 just has this car sitting here parking, he doesn't drive it and it just sits there. Um, so I took this car from uh, one of his houses and I've been having it. I kidnapped it and I've been just had it here and I've been taking care of it. Taking it to get his oil changes, taking it to get his services. I've changed the battery three times and people just love this vehicle. They love the wrap. Uh, he did such a magnificent job with, with this wrap. Like this is one of the, the cars that people love to come see. Uh, and every once in a while when a kid is a huge 50 Cent fan, I take him out and I let him sit in the car. I let him do a spin with me in the car and they just absolutely positively love this car. Okay, what year is this car? 2020. It has like a Versace wrap. It looks like a Versace-esque wrap. Yeah, Versace absolutely. Yes. Okay, now what about the rims? Are these the standard rims? These are not the standard rims. I don't even know where 50 got these rims for, but people just love the rims. They love the way it sits. Uh, I'm not a huge Aventador fan, 
Uh, this is a V12, so it's a big engine, but it's very jerky when it shifts gears. So this is better for you to shift gears on your own. So this is like a paddle shift. A paddle shift, it means you shift the gears like this. Okay, what's the original color of this car? Can you guess the original color of this car? I would think black. Nope. No? The original Why? color of this car is yellow. Yellow? yellow. Oh, because the interior is yellow also. The interior is yellow. Ah. Yeah, so the original car is yellow. So this car was yellow. Uh, and whoever did this car did layers of, of wraps. So if you see it, the car was originally yellow. Then they wrapped it blue and then they put the, the graphics on it. So mm. this car is just a dope car, man. I mean, and, and if he was to sell a car, he would have to sell it with the wrap. Cause I mean, I'm sure somebody would want to buy this with the wrap on the car. This is a lot easier than the Ford GT. <laughs> okay. So bigger guys can get in this car. You don't need to have your Megan Thee Stallion knees or squats to be able to get in this one. The good thing about this is this is convertible, all right? So with convertible, you can get in real easy. So I call it the slide in. So what you do is you put one leg in, your ass against the seat, other leg in, and you just kind of just slide down and you're Ooh. in. Very simple. You get a lot more room. The seats do move. They are power, so you can move the seats back and forward, unlike the Ford GT where there is no power. So this gives you a little bit, and you feel like you're in a cockpit. Even the way you start it, it's like a jet engine, right? So you have to really pop up the button, <laughs> and then... And there it goes. So the whole thing is really pretty much just like a jet. This is like a fighter jet, and it's, it, it's a great car. It looks great. Everybody turns to it every time they see it. And it's a beautiful car. Even with this car, this car has about a thousand miles on it. 50s had this car for about three, four years and only a thousand miles. And I guarantee I put probably 70% of those miles on the car. What's the retail on this car? Like at the time? Retail on this car was about, uh, I would say anywhere from 480 to 550, depending on options. Uh, the replacement is starting at about 699, 750 for the replacement for this. So it's going to be a very high stick, a very expensive car. Uh, this is going to separate the, the, the boys to the men. A lot of people that you know, they get a Lamborghini, they get the Huracan. Huracan is the smaller version, but I always think if you're going to get a Lamborghini, the doors have to go up. If the doors don't go up, then why, why have a Lamborghini? That's right. how I look at Lamborghini it. Lamborghini doors is a term. Lamborghini doors is the thing. That's what makes the doors go up. So that's how I look at Lamborghini, other than the Euros, which is the truck. But if you have a Lamborghini and it's a sports car, the doors have to go up. Okay, now this is a convertible, but it's Correct. not an automatic convertible. No, this is not a hard top convertible. Uh, the convertible top is actually in the trunk. So you have to actually take the trunk out, snap on the left side, snap on the right side. So anytime it rains and you're driving, it's not like you can push a button. You have to actually pull over and put this together like a puzzle piece. Uh, for somebody the first time driving, it's very difficult. It's not that easy. It's, it takes time. It's, you know, people think, oh, you just snap it in. No, it's, it's a fucking like, every time I have to do it, I have to call somebody that owns it to be like, well, how do you do this again? And they have to guide me through it because it's very difficult. It seems like it's two pieces and it'll be easy but it's not that easy. Right, but it's not actually the trunk, it's the frunk. It's, it's the frunk, yeah. The frunk, because the trunk is in the front and the engine is in the back. Correct, and, and the fact that Vlad said that tells me he owns a Tesla. So the most important part of a Lamborghini is the engine. The engine, yes. Yeah. And this engine right here is a V12. Whew. This is one of them ones. They, they're gonna stop making V12 shortly, so seeing this and the Revol I guess they call it Revolto or Re Revoluto, whatever you wanna call it, this is like no other. A V12, I mean, this is, I mean, as you see, they have the straps in to make sure it stays in place. And this is like no other. I mean, this is a V12. You, don't, you hardly see it in cars, and I'm sure you won't see it much. Okay. As they say, this is the last of a dying breed. It's got the see-through trunk, mm -hmm. essentially. And from what I understand, these glass pieces move at certain speeds? Yeah, so the, the whole car actually moves depending on what it needs for aerodynamics. So when it takes off, the car drops off, and when it slows down sometimes, these things pop up to slow the cars down. So this whole thing moves when it, when it, when it needs to. Mm. Love it, love it. Quite a car, man. Yeah, this is, this, is, this is a great one. This is a great one. This is the one, well, put like this, an oil change on this car was $2,300 to do an oil change. Okay, a new battery cost how much? The new battery was uh, installed was eighteen hundred dollars. Eighteen hundred for a battery. Yeah, and we did it three times. Okay, and if you want, you know, since I don't change my batteries, to buy a new battery in like a, a Honda is how much? Mm, in the store about a hundred dollars, maybe hundred. How much is this new store? About a hundred dollars. So a hundred for it. a regular battery, eighteen hundred. So eighteen times the price of a regular battery. Absolutely.
is a battery for the Lamborghini. Absolutely, yeah, battery for a Lamborghini. And you can install it yourself. So a lot of these times is- You gotta pay for the service on top of it. You gotta pay for the service on top of it, which is crazy. But Lambo does me well. Every time I bring the car in, they get me in, get me out. Like I know in the Ferrari, the battery is actually right under the, the your front, where you put your feet on the passenger side. So we know how to get into that because sometimes we have to disconnect the battery depending on what market we're in. Because sometimes you have to disconnect the battery when you go to the car show and you bring them into a building, you have to disconnect the battery or they want you to have a quarter tank of gas. Aha. Got it. What does it get about one mile per gallon? <laughs> Not too much. As as every time you start it up, it burns about, I swear, 10 gallons. But uh, like I said, this is a beautiful car. Everything is, is damn near carbon on this car. And this is a quick bitch. All right, here we go. So this is going to be the last feature that we do. And we actually have two of the same cars. That's right. OK, so what are these? So these are 2000 G-Wagon Cabriolet. Now these Cabriolets are only made in Europe, all right? You couldn't make it here. I don't know why, maybe it didn't pass the, the standards. I don't know, but it was only made in Europe and you had to actually ship it in. The first person I seen with this car was Little Kim and that's Little Kim's there. The difference between mine and Little Kim's, well, they're exactly the same, but she did some upgrades to hers. She lifted hers up, she put bigger rims, and she put a kit on hers. I kept mine very plain Jane. I did put a Rentec engine, exhaust, and everything in it, so mine is souped up. Mine is super duper fast. But these are the two different cars. Same exact cars, but you can see we have two totally two different styles. I'm more original. I'm more just chill, relax, and chill. Kim is a little short, so she wants to be big and brawlic, and they're both pretty dope. What I did to this car is I upgraded it to make it look like the 2019 version, the 2018 version, before they changed the grill. So everything looks pretty much new. Uh, Mercedes did all of this. So shout out to Manhattan Mercedes. They did this whole car from Luda to Tuda to make this better. They did interior and everything, and I absolutely positively love this car. This is one of those cars, top down, you relax, nobody knows what it is, but when they see it, they love it. Now, Kim, she's, if you look at her car, hers is more aggressive. She has the big tires. She has the lights in the front. Like hers, I always say that when I want to run over a car, I'm going to use hers to run over a car because it can definitely get over a car. You can see her logo in the seats. We're going to do a lot of work to this. We're going to change it up a lot. Kim said, MV, do what you want. So we're going to make this even better than it is now. So I can't wait for you guys to see it next year for the car show. Mine, I'm going to keep it very generic. The only other thing that we did on this car is we put a system in it. So the car could actually bump. So if you look, has the DJ MV system, two 12s in there, and this thing hits. There's not much room back there, so the whole system is pretty much the room, but I really don't need much in here. I mean, when I'm driving this, if I gotta put something in the back, I just put something in the back. Now, this car was made, if you don't know, G-Wagons were military vehicles, so they're pretty strong. So things like this, they used to stand on it as the vehicle was driving, they would have the machine guns shooting at people. So this, you could probably put a real, uh, well, fat is not politically correct, a beast person on here, and it would definitely hold the weight. What was the retail of this car? Um, I paid probably about 150. Okay, so, so that's retail the retail. was probably around $100,000 when it came out. Okay, right, because G-Wagon is notorious for being like marked up at the dealership. I remember right. I was at the Mercedes dealership in Calabasas and it was like 75,000 over sticker just right. to buy it, brand right. new. So they were doing that back then as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is about 150, well, 100 retail, 150, you I bought it? I paid about, yeah, 150 okay. for you. But you're saying right now it's for 350? About 300,000 to 350, depending wow. on year, make, and how many miles. This car has about close to 30,000 miles on it. Uh, it's one of those cars I don't drive much. I drive it when I take the kids to the beach, take the kids to go get ice cream, or if I just want to chill, I take this car. I really don't drive this car. Uh, everything in the car is it's pretty much old, but it's, it's classic. It's what it is, and everybody loves this car. Okay, and this is the Cabriolet, AKA the convertible, but it's got the bar Correct. on top. So they made it for only a certain number of years, right? Yep. Which years was it? I, I think they made it for 10 years in a very limited amount. So to even, to, so I'll show you how the, how the top comes up. You have to uh, pull emergency brake up, right? Pull these down, one, two, and then when you start it, just push this down. And like I said, it's, it's an older car, it's a 2000 car, so it's gonna take a little time. It's not gonna be the fastest in the world. You can have some coffee, have a conversation, you can go to Starbucks, it's coming around. I mean, it, it'll get there. It'll eventually get there. It, it'll, it'll eventually get there. And it's not that it's broken, this is just how these cars were back then. So when it gets to this point right here, now you have to lock it in. You just hold it down, pull this up, pull this up, and you were off to the races. And now you... Okay, so let's take a look at the interior. So this is, uh, this is an AMG, right? Yep. 
Okay, so you got the AMG interior. AMG the... kit. So this is not an AMG. This is a Rentec on it. And the Rentec was advanced to make the car faster, uh, to make it uh, quicker, and to make the exhaust louder. Uh, they didn't make this for the AMG. So everything is AMG inspired. So the interior is AMG inspired that Mercedes did over, uh, similar to my G63 outside. Got it, got it. Yeah, it's just, it's an older car. So, you know what I mean? Everything looks old in here. It doesn't look new. The wood grain looks old. The uh, steering wheel looks old. The horn beeps old. It's it's one of those cars. The only thing we did too here is we did put an Alpine system in here like we were back in, in, in the 90s and 2000s. Uh, and we did that for a system. I mean, when I say wood grain here, original wood, original leather, it's, it's a beautiful car. This is one of the cars I'll never sell. This is, my daughter will kill me because she wants this car, but this is just one of the ones I just will not sell. And this is the oldest car that you have in your collection? It's not the oldest car. I've had this car in my collection the longest. The 1988, no, actually the 1967 Lincoln Continental, the Suicide Doors Convertible Top is my oldest car. But this is, I had this car in the collection the longest. I've had this car for about maybe, I would say 12 years. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. You've kept, you've held on to this car longer than any other car that you've held on to. That's right, yeah. Wow, 12 years. Yep, 12 okay. years. So this is a little Kim's car. So we know Kim is about 5'5", five, five, so. 4'11". 4'11 and a half, all right? So when Kim gets in the car, of course she's short, so she uses the step, which I think is dope. My wife would actually love this step. And you know, the car is really, really done. She's, she was the first person that I actually seen with this that made me want it. I remember uh, going to one of the clubs in the city and I used to see Kim and her girls pull up in it and I just thought it was amazing. I thought she actually cut the top, but she didn't. And I was able to find one, I found one and I bought it and Kim was my inspiration for mine. Uh, now, Kim did a lot to this. She put the uh, rims on it. She put the side panels. She did so much to this car, and this car is absolutely positively dope. Um, I think we're going to change the color on the car. She wants a, a, another car, another colorway, and I can't wait for you guys to see it next year. But yeah, this is dope. I mean, these logos have been in her headrest for, if I got mine 12, 13, 14 years ago, she's got hers. She's had this car about 18 years, which is pretty dope. And I always love what Kim does. I've always been a big supporter of Kim. Um, and you know, Kim, Kim is one of those people that I would say in this game, she would call up and check up on me just to make sure I'm good, make sure my mental's all right, make sure my family's good. So I love Kim for that. So whatever I can do to help her out, I can. How big are these rims right here? Uh, I don't even know. I think they're 36s. I could be wrong. What's, Damn. What size are these rims, Sean? They are. Yeah, these rims are. Yep. 36s with monster tires on. And monster tires. How does this thing ride? That's another story for another day. <laughs> we have to fix that. Mine rides smooth. This rides like a monster truck. Yeah. Uh, this, I, you're not driving to Virginia with this one. You drive to Virginia with that one. This one, you're gonna go short distances and looks pretty and you're gonna get out. But we're gonna make the ride a lot better and we're gonna make this car a little better. But this is not the, the best ride out there. It is a truck. It is a monster truck. And that's what this is for. So is this car worth about the same? Yeah, this car's worth about the same. Um, it's, it's all in what people are buy. Uh, most people that buy these cars are usually people that live in the Hamptons and live by the beach and they want to drive it to the beach and this, that, and the other. So they'll spend the money for these cars, about $350,000, because that's what they use it for. They use it to take it to the beach one of those days. Um, I'm seeing more and more people, like I see uh, Kendall Jenner has one. I know Travis Scott has a brown one. Uh, I'm seeing a couple celebrities having them. Uh, this is the one thing when you see a rich parent, they always buy this for their little 17 year old daughter. They always try to get it. They're almost impossible to get. So that's why you can always get so much money because there's always a rich girl about to be 16, 17 that wants this for her sweet 16. And uh, when somebody offers me a million dollars, I'm gonna let it go. So if there's any rich dads out there and you want this for your kid, this one's for you. I mean, when it comes to selling cars, does the celebrity aspect matter? I mean, for example, if you're, wanting to buy a car, the fact that it's little Kim's car, does that have like a premium on top of it? Or if it's like LeBron James's car or Michael Jordan's car? Or do people no, not really care? It's really I don't really think it cares, it's just really the car. I think back then they, people used to care, but I don't think people care now. Um, I wanted to buy a lot of celebrities' cars because I wanted to use them for the car show. Like Nas has a Benz, a 190E out in Long Island that I wanted to buy that he used recently. I just think it's cool for, I just think people don't have those artifacts. And I just think it would be pretty cool when people get to see Oh, that was LL's car in the video. That yeah. was Nas's car. Uh, Slick Rick has a Rolls Royce that I've been trying to buy because I just want it, fix it up and be like, that's Slick Rick's car. So when I do these car shows, people can see that aspect of it. I don't want the, the BMW that got shot up nine, you know, six times from Tupac. I don't want that car, but I do want the car that people are known for. Like, you know, that's probably why 50 Cent, I never sell that Versace Lambo because that's synonymous with him. 
you know, but some of those cars I would definitely love to keep. Hey, man, listen, Envy, I appreciate, you know, you giving us a tour of thank your you, incredible garage, your incredible car collection. I learned a lot. Oh, no, thank you. Know, you. The prices have blown me away. Yeah. Because you know? I just assumed that, you know, these are still used cars, but now these are actually collector's items. Yeah, what, what most people don't understand, you know, people are, are fast to say, if you buy a car, it's a bad investment. No, it's buying the right car and yeah. knowing what you're getting that car for. Uh, a lot of my vehicles are investments. And, you know, if, if anything ever goes wrong or if I want to get rid of them, I will make money off of them. And I tell people that you just have to know what you're buying. Do your homework. Do your research. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have to understand that if I buy a Rolls Royce Cullinan, it's not going to be worth the money later on because that's not a car. They're mass yeah. made. But a car like a Ford GT, same price as a Cullinan new, but that Ford GT is now worth one three, one four, And that Cullinan is probably $100,000. Hmm. There we go. Envy, man. I appreciate everything. Thank you, guys. And hopefully I'll see you next time. And I'll bring my other cars here and we can go over six other cars that, that we have. How many cars do you have in your collection total? You own yourself. I own about 16 cars. 16 cars. 16 cars. So do you have some sort of special insurance policy? Because I'm assuming it's not 16 separate policies. Is there some sort of group? Because you're not driving them all at once. So. No, well, the way that it works is some of the cars have regular insurance, meaning you drive it daily. And then some of them have kind of like occasional insurance, like you drive it a couple of times a year. Uh -huh. For instance, that E30 M3, I don't drive it that much. So it has insurance that you drive it very rarely to car shows, car meets and things like that. Uh, and then some of the cars like, you know, my G-Wagon is I have insurance because I use it every day. So it's, it depends on insurance and all insurance company has it. Some people use Haggerty, some people use State Farm, some people use Geico. And I go with whatever is, is the best insurance. Okay, 16 cars. Is that the most cars you've ever owned at one time? Uh, during the pandemic, I had 19. 19 cars. 19 cars. Okay. 19 cars. Is there a number where you feel is too much? 16. It's too much. 16 is too you much. You know what? And, and the reason that it's too much is, is you have all these cars, and the majority of them are older. It's just, it's just fixing them up and, and getting them going, you know, because people will tell you when you have these cars, you have to drive them. Uh, so, like, uh, my 69 Camaro uh, was beat up because I didn't drive it. Mm -hmm. So it's being fixed because it doesn't drive. So I try to drive the cars a little bit, even if I'm taking the kids to things. So, you know, E30 M3, uh, the G-Wagon convertible, the Urus, the uh, SF90, the Pista. Those are both Ferraris. Um, what else? I have a 296 convertible, um, Rolls Royce Cullinan, uh, G63. I'm trying to go through the cars. Uh, what else I have? E30 M3, I said already. What else do I have? Jesus you can't remember all I can't remember. I can't remember That's all the crazy. cars. Because you see certain people, like Jerry Seinfeld has like 100 cars. Jay Leno has like a, 100 cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, who, in terms of people that you know, who has the most number of cars? The most number of cars has to be Jay Leno. Jay Leno. You know him personally? No, I don't. Okay. How many cars do you have? I don't know. But I know Jay Leno has a shit ton of cars. And, I, and his warehouse is amazing. Jay Leno has... And he has a little bit of everything. He has old, he has new, he has old Rolls Royces, old BMWs. He has a collection beyond collection. And I love his collection. I looked it up. He has over 180 cars and 160 motorcycles. That's crazy. Crazy. That's insane. 340 vehicles. 340 vehicles. Could you imagine what he pays monthly in insurance? He's got that money, though. He does. He's good. He's, yeah, I think he's straight. I think he's okay. That's what it is. Peace. Peace, yeah.